Okay, welcome back to the um, uh, printed circuit board class. This is the wrap-up class for KiCad. This is actually quite easy. Um, and um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be generating something called Gerber files. Um, Gerber files are in a, a quite archaic file format, um, but that's what the industry uses. Okay, so we're going to go to File. I'm oh, sorry, you're, you're going to do this from um, your printed circuit board uh, program. And we're going to go File. And I'm on a really small screen, so I, I have to scroll down to Plot. And then we bring up the Plot window. Okay, the Plot window, we have to make for sure our format is the right one. There's several to choose from here. Uh, Gerber is the one we want. Okay. So, we have a whole bunch of layers we can have this thing plot out. We always want the front and back layers. You almost never want the adhesion layers. These are layers with, where they glue components to the board. You know, cell phone vendors use this, but most of the rest of us do not. And then we have solder paste layers. Um, frankly, we do not need the back solder paste layer. That, that will always be empty, but I usually leave it checked just to make for sure that I don't accidentally have something on the back side. Uh, then we have the silk screen layers, which are front and back silk screen, which is what the human readable stuff is. And then there's the mask, solder mask front and back. And then there's printed circuit board edges. So we want all of that. And then we come down here to options. And the most op important options are to plot your module references references, so those are things like N1, uh, U2, uh, whatever, uh, and if there's anything else in the text on the silk screen, we want to plot that. We almost, I almost never print the module values. That's stuff like 10K or you know, 0.1 microfarad and stuff like that. I, I think it's kind of redundant. Uh, also, frequently after you make the board, you'll change the value anyhow, so um, I never plot them. Okay, and then you have some other things on here. Uh, some people do not want to tent their vias. I think you almost always want to tent your vias. Tenting is when the solder mask material covers your vias. So I always leave this check off. Okay, and then you always want to use proper file name extensions and um, you never want to put the PCP edge on all your other layers. Okay. There's another one here called Subtract Solder Mask from Silk Screen. Your vendor will do that for you automatically, so I never click it because they, they will do it the way they want to do it. So that's, that's all we do here. When we, you know, that, that's your setup. So you do two things. You gener generate your drill file. You can generate it in millimeters or inches. It doesn't matter. Your vendor can deal with it. Okay. You can do it in a whole bunch of uh, file formats. You don't care. Just you know, pick one. The vendors can deal with it. Okay, um, and uh, away we go. So all it is is I click OK here, and we click Save. It's going to generate um, uh, two drill files, up to two drill files, something called uh, regular drill and something called NPH, NPTH which is for the drill holes that do not are not supposed to be plated through. So it's non-plated through hole, NPTH. Okay. Um, so that's, that's where we're at. Um, so we're going to hit save. And Kyle has just shown me that this version of KiCad that I'm running has different layout of these screens than everybody else. So when you, when you run KiCad, just look for these values. The final thing we do is we hit plot, and this generates all the files. Then we hit close. That is it. Generating Gerber files is basically you generate the drill file, the Gerber files, and then you're done. So we actually do not need this file anymore. So I will quit out of that. And now we bring over our program here, 
and we bring up GERBV, Gerber Viewer. And I have to resize it to this screen. Okay. Okay, my honest opinion about um, the KiCad GURB view is it's pretty good, but I always use the, a different one, which I think is even better. Okay. Um, so we're going to quickly do this, and then I'm going to show you the other one. Okay, so. The first thing you do is you load your drill file, okay, and I load both of them. We click open, and you'll see it's, it's brought in two layers worth of uh, Gerber. Then the other thing we do is we bring in all of the Gerbers. So it says load Gerber file. Oops, I clicked the wrong one, my apologies. Load Gerber file. And I, I just load them all and click open. And then I resize this. And uh, I decided not to resize properly. Okay. Um, so there it is. And then you come over here and you can see which layers. Now the biggest problem I have with this program is it doesn't tell you the names of the files that are loaded. So you have to guess. And I don't like that at all. Okay. Let's resize this a little bigger. So I usually click off all the layers. Click, 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 click. And then I start trying to figure out what they are. So that's the drill hole layer. That's the uh, non-plated through hole layer. That's the back layer. That's the front layer. No, it's not the front layer. I'm, it is the front layer. The other problem is it, it stacks them up the way they want to. That's the front layer. So usually you only look at a few layers at a time. So I'm going to stop with this one. I'm going to show you a different one called Gerbsy. So I'm going to exit out of here, and if you're running Ubuntu or something, you just get GURBV through sudo apt-get install GURBV. Um, and I'm going to resize this command window so we can see how I do it. So this is this is GERBV. Um, let me focus. Um, so I just do GERBV star dot drill star dot g question question, and that just brings all the files in one shot, um, right there. So the first thing you'll notice is that it lists the names of the files next to all the check marks and the colors. Um, this is something that would be fairly easy to fix in the KiCad Gerber viewer, but they haven't done it yet, or at least not the version that I have here. Um, so with this, it's a lot easier to do. I can resize this like that. And they have several methods of drawing. I always go to the high quality version uh, because it, it, it really does look better. Okay. And then we start clicking off all these layers and we start looking at each layer individually. So these two layers are the holes that are drilled. And I usually leave those clicked on. Now we look at the back layer. And what you're looking for when you ex examine your Gerber files it's things that are like pretty obviously wrong. Sometimes you'll see a trace that's just wandering around that doesn't, you, you could have just drawn it straight, okay? 
So you'll fix those. You'll look, you're looking for traces that may be a little too close together. Okay, this is just the, the human Mark I eyeball. Okay, so we turn that layer off and we turn on the front layer. <laughs> Same thing, we're looking for problems. Okay, um, I've already fixed most of the problems on this. So then we look at our solder masks. Okay, okay, this is the back solder mask. So that'll be applied to the holes, the, -ho the non-plated through holes, and all the through hole components, you'll see the solder mask. So let me click on that on and off so you can see where all the through hole parts on, are on this thing. Then you look at the front, and you see the front has all the through hole parts plus all the surface mount parts. So I can click the uh, through hole parts and you see them toggling on the, the screen there. And everything else is front solder mask. Okay, so now what I do is I look at the edge layer, make for sure that the edges are all fine. I usually leave the edge layer turned on. Nothing should ever go over the edge layer. And then we're going to look at the um, solder paste. So this is back solder paste, and it is empty as it should be. And then this is front solder paste, and this is where all our surface mount paste for the stencils will go. And then, those look good. And now we're going to look at the silk screen layer. The silk screen layer is, usually has a whole bunch of errors on it, so spend a little time looking at it. What I like to do with my silk screen layers is make uh, all the uh, lettering as, as much as possible be horizontal. I try to keep the vertical stuff to a minimum. I try to make for sure that all of my um, jumpers are labeled as to what way they should be in order to be jumpered. I label all the connectors. Try, try to make it so that they're, everything's there. I also try to make for sure that the name of the board and the revision is present as well. Okay. Uh, some vendors have a background layer, okay. Uh, I usually put something on the background so that, uh, like the board name and the everything else, and the revision letter. Um, some vendors do not do back screen silk, so uh, you won't see this. You should always try to have everything critical on the front side. And that's Gerber's. Um, and when you like them, they're ready to be shipped off. And most vendors want you to put all of your Gerbers into a zip file, and then you mail it to them, or you know, submit it to them, send the money, and they send you boards. Um, so that's basically the back end of the Gerber um, files. It's pretty straightforward. We don't we don't have to really spend all that much time doing it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down now, and then we're going to do question and answer.